so welcome back to my channel today we'll be discussing functions of the frontal lobe of the human brain so the frontal lobe extends from the frontal pole to the central sulcus then from the border of the superior longitudinal fissure to the lateral sulcus so the first gyrus we look at is the pre-central gyrus what we call the primary motor area or area 4 so this area initiates and controls voluntary motor activity and damage to it will give you contralateral hemiplegia it will affect a part of the motor homunculus if you have let's say cortical stroke the motor homunculus is the somatotopic representation of the human body on the motor strip then you have what you call the superior uh, supplementary motor area on the superior frontal gyrus so this is actually known as area 6 and it's in combination with the premotor cortex uh, what we call the premotor area on the lateral convexity both of them are involved in planning of motor activity and so damage to this area will actually give you motor apraxia or the inability to plan for motor activity the dominant hemisphere has two main parts in the inferior frontal gyrus this triangular part known as pars triangulare and this border of the lateral sulcus known as the opacular part or pars operculare so these two in the dominant hemisphere form what we call broca's area or area 44 45 and they're involved in motor speech and if you damage this area in the dominant hemisphere what you get is motor aphasia basically the inability to articulate your words uh, that uh, comprehensively in the middle of the middle frontal gyrus here what you have is the frontal eye field area or broadman area 8 and so this allows you to control conjugate gaze on a horizontal plane and if you damage it what you get is ipsilateral eye deviation that means the eye will deviate to the side of the lesion now we have what we call the orbitofrontal cortex which is on the ventral surface or the basically the base of the brain so you have the straight gyrus or the gyrus recti there the olfactory sulcus with the olfactory tract now this is the medial orbital gyrus which is responsible for the reward integration and so it allows you to reinforce behavior then you have the anterior orbital gyrus there and this is responsible for decision making in terms of your economics that is monetary gain you're basically making fiscal decisions and then you have the lateral orbital gyrus and this is responsible for integration of punishment or the negative uh, reinforcement if you look at the posterior orbital gyrus here this posterior orbital gyrus is the one that is known as the secondary test cortex it basically integrates uh, test functions and so if you have integration of test at the level of the cortex secondarily you create what you call a hedonic hotspot so hedonism is pleasure seeking behavior and so the hedonic pathway eventually integrates at the posterior orbital gyrus and so it allows you to feel that pleasure okay and enjoy uh, food then you have the regulation of emotions in decision making and that is because of the fear of uh, punishment or retribution then there is also fiscal responsibility because of the arterial orbital gyrus and the avoidance of risky behavior because of the concept of uh, punishment now if you damage the orbital frontal cortex if you damage this area what can be seen here on the mri you can get depression because of uh, your inability to feel pleasure we can also go into mania if you are unable to regulate your emotions in decision making and that can also give you a poor impulse control 
So usually the emotions will start to oscillate and if it's a long term thing you may end up with a borderline personality disorder. These are people who are also prone to aggressive outbursts and verbal lewdness. This is basically uh, sexual, making sexually inappropriate uh, comments. Some of them may just have jocularity, which is their propensity to make jokes. Now, we have an area on the dorsolateral prefrontal area. Yeah, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. So this is area 9 and this is area 46. This is what we call the cognitive area. And it's long believed that this is the area that gives you your intelligence, your fund of knowledge. It allows you to reason, to be rational, to make good decisions, okay? Uh, and basically to be able to judge things well. And so because it allows you to be rational, it allows you to tell the difference between what uh, is, is real and what is false. And so this is usually the area that is damaged uh, sometimes when people have schizophrenia. So in schizophrenia, it's a psychotic disorder. So you are unable to actually differentiate reality from delusions or hallucinations. In dementia, the main thing that is being affected is memory. So this is the area that has been uh, studied a lot in terms of those two conditions, together with another area here known as the insular cortex that we'll discuss later. Now, the ventromedial prefrontal cortex is this area here. So this is the corpus callosum, the one that connects the two hemispheres of the cerebrum. So this is the subcallosal area. And so this is what we call the ventral, medial, prefrontal cortex. And this is actually what we call the cingulate gyrus above the corpus callosum. So if you have this area here, part of the cingulate gyrus, okay, and now part of the uh, medial prefrontal cortex. So this area uh, actually integrates a lot of emotions because it's considered to be part of the limbic system. The limbic system is what integrates uh, human emotions. And so this area allows you to be able to comprehend social norms and make moral judgment. So it's also known as the social cognition area. So people who develop antisocial personality disorders, what we commonly call sociopathy, uh, that is based on someone's experiences or what we call nature, and psychopathy, which is based on the nature, uh, how someone is actually born. These two conditions, so this one is due to nature, so it's, also, it's actually called an acquired antisocial disorder. And this, is, uh, this psychopathy is actually considered to be innate. You are actually born with it. So the main area that uh, has been shown to be affecting those conditions is this area here. And so you are able to lose uh, your comprehension of social norms and being able to make a moral uh, judgment. So thank you very much. If there is any question, you can leave them on the comment section below.